Welcome to another Sunday School Short. Today we are in Matthew 4, Luke 4, and Luke 5. So Mark, uh, Matthew 4, Jesus is led by the Spirit into the wilderness. He's to be tempted by the devil. Forty days and forty nights he fasts, and he becomes very hungry. Satan says, if you are the Son of God, turn these stones into bread. Jesus says, no. The scriptures say people don't live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. He takes Jesus then to the highest point of the temple, and he says, if you're the Son of God, jump off, where the scriptures say, see, even the devil knows scripture. The scriptures say he will order his angels to protect you, and they will hold you up with their hands, and won't even let you hurt your foot on a stone. Jesus said, uh, res rebuts Satan with scripture as well, saying, you must not test the Lord your God. He takes him to the peak of a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world. Satan says, I will give this all to you if you will kneel and worship me. And he says, get out of here, Satan, for the scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. And the devil went away and angels came and took care of Jesus. Jesus then hears that John the Baptist had been arrested. Uh, he, uh, Jesus was preaching out through mainly the area of Galilee, which is around the Sea of Galilee. And he was preaching very similar to what John the Baptist was saying. Repent from your sins. Turn to God. The same messages that the prophets of old were saying to the people of Israel and Judah all along the way. And they kept rebelling, remember? Um, and it's the same message I preach to you today. Repent, turn from your evil ways, turn to God. Rely on Him for everything, and I am talking to myself. Uh, one day along the uh, Sea of Galilee, we again see Jesus. This is another parallel verse for, uh, with other um, Gospels where we get several different accounts of the same um, historical account here. He's calling John and James, and he calls Simon, Peter, and Andrew away from the fishing. Their fishing, um, that's, that was their career, that was their job, saying, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. And they left at once. They were obedient at once. He says, Jesus preached throughout the, the area of Galilee, the Ten Towns region, which is on the east side of the Sea of Galilee, through, throughout Jerusalem and all Judah, it says. Luke 4 also speaks of Jesus' time of temptation in the wilderness. A little bit different order, but the results are the same, much like a traffic accident. There are slight variations in non-essential details, but that validates the authority of what happened. If everything was exactly identical, it would seem fraudulent. It would seem copied, but it's not. Those details, non-essential details, are, have slight variation in them, which adds to its validity. All right, uh, Luke adds... As to part of this story, when the devil had finished tempting Jesus, he left him until the next opportunity came. This is this is very important. Uh, we should recognize that Satan uh, comes like water, sometimes like a tidal wave or a flood, but also he can come like a Miranda, um, meandering stream, just nice and quiet and lull us to sleep and into complacency. So we must be aware of that. Another parallel happens when Jesus... Uh, is preaching in the synagogue throughout the region of Galilee. Luke adds details about he preached at Nazareth and his boyhood home. And um, we, he was reading from the book of Isaiah. And in 18 he says, and I'll just read this direct from you. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has anointed me to bring the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim that captives will be released, that the blind will see, that the oppressed will be set free, and that the time of the Lord's favor has come. This is Isaiah's prophecy of the coming Messiah. And he, he says all this, and then he just sits down. Um, and the people say, hey, isn't this just Joseph's son? Because they knew him. They knew him as a boy. And Jesus uh, says in verse 24, no prophet is accepted in his own hometown. And he talks about Elijah. He could have ministered in his own land, but instead he was called to a widow in Sidon. And Elisha was helped out a leper in uh, Syria, even though there were many lepers in Israel at the time. 
When the people in the synagogue heard this, they were furious and they mobbed him. They pushed him to the edge of a hill with the intent to push him over. And it says in verse 30, but he passed right through the crowd and went on his way. And something only God could do. Where, I mean, they were in with bad intentions and he just passed through the crowd miraculously. Uh, 31 through 44 recounts Mark 1, a similar version, where uh, a demon-possessed man in the synagogue was healed. This is the key verse here is 34. The demon says, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And the people were amazed, saying, Even the evil spirits obey him and flee at his command. Simon's mother in law in verses 38 through 41 is healed of fever. This is another parallel. Luke adds that he rebuked the fever, whereas Mark 1 says he just took her hand and helped her up again. Um, the details here are non essential details. Jesus healed, but it, the story uh, validates itself by having different points of view. Again, um, he went to an isolated place to pray. This is also a parallel story. And um, the people came looking after him. Peter and others came looking for him, and he said, Hey, we must go to other towns as well. This is why I was sent. Luke 5. Uh, Jesus is standing, preaching beside the Sea of Galilee, and, and the crowds are pressing around him, so he steps into a boat, Simon Peter's boat. Afterwards, and he continues to preach, afterwards, he tells Simon, go into deeper waters, let down your nets. Simon Peter says, hey, we've worked all night, and we didn't catch anything, but hey, if you say so, here's what we'll do. And then this time, it says in verse 6, this time their nets were so full, the nets begin to tear. And Simon Peter realized, uh, what was happening, he said, Oh Lord, please leave me. I'm too much of a sinner to be around you. See, when sin comes in the presence of Jesus, sin must be dealt with. Verses uh, 12 through 16 is a parallel to Mark 1 again, where the um, man with leprosy is healed. 17 through 26, we see the friends uh, uh, carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They tried to take him inside, but the, the crowds were too big, so they climbed up on the roof, and they lowered him down in the roof right there in front of Jesus. Verse 20 says, seeing their faith, um, he healed them. So Jesus said, uh, young man, your sins are forgiven. And the Pharisees were sitting there thinking, only God can forgive sin. And they were right. They were correct. This is key here because Jesus is God. Uh, we'll see that all throughout the Gospels, and I'll try to point that out. Again, this is just a supplement, not a substitute for your time in God's Word. Don't miss this. Don't miss the reading. Jesus goes on to say, Why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or pick up your mat and walk? Verse 24, I'll prove it to you that, I, that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins and son of man is just the title he used for himself so he says i will prove to you that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins and he says stand up and walk immediately as everyone was watching he jumped up picked up his mat and went home rejoicing uh later in verses 27 through 32, Levi, the tax collector, is called to be a disciple. He left everything and followed Jesus. Later, they have a dinner at Levi's home with other tax collectors, other tax cheats. And the Pharisees are saying, why does he hang out with these scum? Asking the disciples that. Verse 31, Jesus says, healthy people don't need a doctor. Sick ones do. And in 32, I've come to call not those who think they are righteous, but those who know that they are sinners and need to repent. 33 through 39 in Luke 5 says, it talks about John the Baptist, uh, his disciples, are, and the question's being asked, you know, why do John the Baptist, why do his disciples fast and pray, and the Pharisees' disciples, they fast and pray? Why are your disciples always eating and drinking? And Jesus says, do the wedding, does the wedding guest fast while celebrating with the groom but someday the groom will be taken away jesus talking about himself and that at that time they will fast and it ends with jesus giving an illustration of new wine and old wineskins new wine being jesus old wineskins being like the pharisees and religious traditions 
And we must be open to the Spirit's leading, uh, not so caught up in our church's traditions and programs and ministries that we aren't always looking for new ways to bring people to Jesus. As long as it's not illegal, immoral, unethical, or unscriptural, we need to, like Paul says, be everything to everybody to bring them to Jesus. That's why I do this Devo, to make it light, to make it um, just in modern day language, to make it interesting, but it is just a spark plug for your time in God's Word. Like, subscribe, and share. God bless you.